Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Crossway Central 101. My name is Chris, and today joining me we have... Brayden. And we're going to be watching some Antonio Gandy Golden with you guys. He is someone who has been very, very highly projected uh, by quite a few people so far. Uh, this is Mark Jarvis's database. He currently has him as a UDFA, but I've seen him go as high as middle of the first round in some mock drafts already this year. So he's definitely someone who's probably going to be going a lot higher than Mark has been projected, which isn't too long uh, But he is listed unofficially at 6'4", 220, and that's probably fairly accurate. He might be a little bit smaller than that, uh, but he's definitely a very big receiver. Uh, so, uh, pretty cool background down here for those of you guys who want to pause. Also, shout out to Gymnastics. Gymnastics is amazing. And he also grew six inches as a high school junior as well. So that's a pretty cool fact. But and yeah, that's what? Um, that, I wish that happened to me. <laughs> For now, we have two games of his to watch. Uh, not a whole lot of tape on him because he is from Liberty. Oh, this is actually 15 minutes. That's kind of nice. Uh, not a whole lot of games because Liberty isn't televised very often. I believe they're a Division two school. So. Wait, Liberty? Yeah. I think they're FBS. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. They're Division One. I, I know that. Oh, this is 15 minutes. And it looks like he is, a, I'm assuming that's him here. That he, yeah, Love so him. he's a captain. As well, which is kind of cool. And this was last year as well, so I would assume he probably is again this year. Should be up here. Now, unfortunately, for those of you guys who haven't seen, oh, like, case in point. For those of you guys who haven't seen uh, some of the other receiver videos, some of these, they don't highlight the receivers, so it can be a little bit difficult at times to actually pick out which one is which. Uh, like in this case here, I thought he was at the top. He's actually the guy at the very bottom. That was a good jump to go up and get there. that. This is Idaho State, so not exactly an NFL caliber defense, but he doesn't have an NFL caliber quarterback thrown to him either. Bottom of the screen once again. That was actually a pretty nice block. I like how he centers himself here. He does a really nice job of bringing the defender's angle and positioning himself to take the defender away from the play. Should be the bottom of the screen again. Yeah. With all due respect to Liberty, I'm pretty sure he's going to be the the only non lineman that's six four on this team. Stacks from last season for those of you guys who care about that kind of so thing. So that threw six games at that point. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, this is we, their seventh game. Kind of a random game to have on, isn't it? Probably ES it's one of those ESPN3 deals. You know, where it's like on the internet and stuff. Yeah. This is possibly some of the weirdest like jumps I've ever seen in tape. Instead of getting to the second level for the block, 
at them and engage them in support. Probably the screen, I'm guessing this time. Probably on a fade of some kind. Or on play. Okay, screen class. Get to see a little bit of running after the catch, which is nice as well. Last NFL player I can remember from Liberty is probably Rashad James. Nice slant. Good route. There we go. I'm like, I'd like to actually see him run a route. I don't want to see like 20 run plays. <laughs> it was nice to see run blocking, though. I will say that, especially as a team who of a team who values when blocking receivers. But yeah, you do get to see here on this particular play. Nice first step, I'll call it not necessarily a release, but first step off the line. And right here. Oh, that was a nice play. Right there with a nice cut. Doesn't overstep either, over extend. Oh, I ran up too far again. But doesn't completely overextend. Nice distance. Pray your heart cut. Did he say? Did he drop that? No, oh, they're having, they're moving the first down. It still says they're in seven. Are they just delaying the? Yes, they're mm -hmm. slow. I guess. You can see the ref pointing it. I think the ref, the the ticker is just being slow. Okay. Yeah. He is lined up on the bottom pretty consistently, so you're not really seeing a lot of whole, a whole lot of inside big slot work. And you're not really seeing him a lot on the line either, which isn't as a huge of a deal for about 31 teams. That should have been caught up. Okay, gets the hands up, creates separation, which is nice. He just dropped it. I don't know. You think he dropped it? I think he just completely missed it. It looked like more of a tracking issue than hands. Okay, deep shot to him, double covered. Not a lot of separation on the one guy, but he is being double covered. Terrible throw. I think he threw it out of bounds in double coverage. That was a... Oh, I hate draw plays. All you're doing is giving him extra time to react. Yeah. 
Nice to be seen. Nice. nice. Creates a little, a little bit of separation. It's not it's extreme. Not You're not talking like Hollywood Brown or anything. But he does a really nice job of timing the jump as well to kind of not give away the position of the ball. Has his head turned, gets his hands up. Nice catch. If you were doing this to Alabama, I would be saying he gives me Julio Jones vibes. Shoving Singer. That was 17. Oh. Maybe the back receiver here. I will. Oh, oh here's the leading receiver. Uh, to the person who made this film, I'd like to, to to make know that if it's not a run, if it's a run, we don't have to see every pre-snap thing. I think I can throw a fade. You have a 6 4 receiver. You do realize that, right? This is some Jim Bob Clear level play calling. First down, run play right up the middle. Second play, run right up the middle. Third play, power set, run to the inside. Not up the middle, but to the inside. All three plays at the goal line. At least they came over with seven, it looks like. Oh, this should be fun. They're probably not even going to throw it to him. Or they didn't throw it up to him on a fade. Oh, they did. Nope, that was 17. Okay, nice curl. Nice run after catch as well. So, in the couple of catches that he has had, he is doing a shove of extending place beyond the catch.
especially for a more possession physical receiver that he profiles as. For most of these plays, for those of you guys wondering, he is on the bottom of the screen. So he's not exactly moving around. Oh, there he's at the top. Screen for once. Still have yet to see him inside. So not exactly a typical slot receiver. I mean, obviously the size kind of speaks to that as well. He has, an, he has more of an outside physique. That was nice. Good, really nice box out there of the, the corner and then just extending the play and it looks like he got the ball in. Yeah, he did. I think he almost got the touchdown. Not a whole lot of separation, but again, he's being double teamed. I, mean, I really like the timing of the, the uh, vertical move as well. Vertical catch. Touchdown. Yeah, at this point, he is definitely high pointing the ball. Nice job seeing him bounce, too. He stayed in, even the back foot there. He's doing a pretty good job of getting out in front and run blocking. He's not really getting a whole lot of like straight drive, but he's not really seeing a lot of press either. So kind of hard to. Completely chase this one blocking. And even if it was, it's still against Idaho State, so it's not exactly the powerhouse team. Nice separation on that play. Are you going to show a replay? They are. Cool. But yeah, at this point in the play, he's already going over the ball. has really nice separation between both defenders that are on him. Again, high point in the ball as well. Size helps, but still. Pretty decent ball tracking. That's outside of the one play. Early on in the game. 
There is a nice fade. Great catch. Same thing. Oh. No spot he doesn't get a lot of separation. How much of that is because he's being held, though? True. I mean, it's not necessarily like egregious holding, but he's definitely got a hold of his arm. Is Shaf staying engaged for most of the play at least? Nice, nice hitch route. Top. I'm pretty sure it's bottom. That's what I meant. Bottom. God. Good lord. <laughs> for some reason, my brain processed that as the top of the screen for a half second. So for those of you new, new to the channel, welcome. We don't normally cover edit these because we like showing as many plays as possible. And we can kind of react in live time as we watch these. I probably should have said that at the beginning, but I didn't know that most of these plays were going to be... This. Parts of plays, yeah. Please like, for the love of Even the run plays are being cut so we can't even like completely see like the finish of the run block. Like on this play, right, like we don't even actually get to see him engage in the block. I mean to be fair, even if you did, I don't think you'd be able to see him. Yeah. Okay. That just sounded so like a that just sounded like a like some sort of death star got started up <laughs> on your end. That's the computer. Hmm. So, I don't know why it just decided to randomly do that, but it did. So, anyway, uh, thoughts on Antonio Gandy Golden through the first game? Um, you, we did get to see some catches. There were, I think, eight was I mean, that game. I mean, yeah, he's... he's He's a he's a nice vertical. You know he's a nice vertical. Has a good job of jumping. You know of high pointing the ball. You know catches with his hands. But the, my main concern is we didn't get to see him run a lot of different routes other than the go. The like slant. one slant. Yeah. Other than that, they were all hitches or goes. But at the and at the same time, on a lot of go of his routes, he didn't get a whole lot of separation, which you'd kind of expect for against the you know against the level of competition he's playing. True. So this game, we will get to see him against a team that was ranked at the time in the top twenty-five. I don't believe they are any longer. No, because they got killed by Syracuse, by Maryland. Uh, and yeah, so Syracuse in this one, he is still number 11. But this should be very interesting because Syracuse is a Power 5 school, uh, which is much better than whatever Idaho State is. FCS. Okay, 
Okay. This was a Kelly. Don't know why. Then... Oh, that was a terrible was throw. Terrible. Okay. Fair enough. Quarterback play, I don't expect to help him out much. As I say that, the dude pulls the Mitch Trubisky. Nice physicality in the blocking. Nice inside release move, nice hands. He put so much effort into miss a three yard throw. That's kind of sad. The quarterback? Yeah. Like, look at his mechanics and how much arm strength he got to bounce a five yard throw. I'm 13 15, too. Oh. Oh, that was a nice inside release move. Look at the seven. Oh, that was nice. That was nice. That inside release move with the line of scrimmage. Tons of room to work. Great shot flash in the hands at the catch point. And then ju juking oh, back. Man. Run after catch as well. A lot of run after catch, actually. All right, time to run the ball three times. Again, tons of room to work. To be fair, they're playing him like five yards off, but again with the inside release move, he's doing a really nice job when you outside in. Nice handy stage, I really like how active the hands were at the line. Nice catch. catch. Rip. Rip again. Really hate to see it. Not bad in the blocking aspect. Nice inside release again. He is doing really good with that this game. There he gets offside. Really nice shot. I, he kind of flips the script a little bit. Kept him getting me. Kept being from inside, inside, inside. Right here, he starts with the inside jump and then gets around him to the outside and catches him in a spin cycle. That's a great release move. Didn't create a ton of separation with it, but I still like the active hands. Nice inside. Beautiful. And it's all set up by how he wins this at the line of scrimmage, right? He has a really nice shot of getting underneath on the, to set up the route from the, the snap. And literally at this point in the play, the play is already over. He's already won. Because the corner is off of him and he's already breaking in. Bam. Just has to look for the ball. Just has to get it off. Easy. That was actually probably a smart play. I like how it's being a little bit more variant. He's going a little bit more outside in the second quarter. Nice move underneath. Kind of had a little bit of a pick play. Again with the underneath move. 
That's a bit of a horse collar. I really like how aggressive he is at the line. That's been really nice to see in this game so far. He's doing a nice job of taking the area given to him when they play off. And he's doing a really nice job of leading him at the line when they play uh, hard. So the main conclusion I've taken away that from this game is that Idaho State has better corners than Syracuse. They're just playing him different. I, honestly, I think it has more to do with the scheme. Because with the Idaho State game, what they were doing was they were basically just playing the go. They didn't want him to beat him over the top, down the field on that on that go step, miracle, fly, streak, whatever you want to call it. In this game, they're doing, Syracuse is doing the opposite. Almost a large portion of these snaps, they're playing him real tight at the line. So, you get this, so he has to use those release moves. He has to bring him inside of the line or outside of the line. And kind of create that separation by winning at the snap point instead of down the field. That was mostly a joke, but thank you for that. That was. This quarterback may has may have less arm strength than I do. <laughs> I'm oh, not saying crap. something because I'm a real midget. The offensive line isn't exactly helping him well either. Yeah. Oh dear. They also seem this... to be double covering him a lot more too, which is interesting. With Idaho State, they felt a little bit more comfortable. And it seems oh my! To be working because they're getting a lot of pressure. Drag. Tons of separation. That could be my face mask, probably. Nice uh, zone, uh, IQ zone IQ there. IQ there. Even, better Even better zone IQ once he got down the field. I really like how he slips through the coverage here. Finds the and, just... and then he gets down the field and splits the zones to create that separation gap. That's good zone recognition. What were you going to say? I was like, did he catch it or was like a, was it a bad throw? I could, it was a uh, throw. I can tell from that angle. Okay. Like it wasn't shaded properly, so I can see.
<laughs> Did he literally just had that ball like broke right out of his hand? Yeah, he he he. he that's real tough right there. I don't think he watched the hand. I think he just got it stolen right from his hand. That's most unfortunate. So, uh, thoughts on those two games of what we were able to see from him? Um, pretty decent receiver for what we, you know, pretty good, good hands. Showed a lot better getting with with his release and getting separation in the second game, but has a nice vertical. Obviously, has the size you like. So there's a lot to that you will you you like to see there from someone from Liberty that you can work with. So, uh, here we go. I haven't done, I've already gone over the categories in the turn of videos, but I'll go over them again. I think this is the first receiver video you bring in. Uh, so, hands and contested catching are, uh, like, basically just pretty so simple. It's mostly, the contested catching is mostly for your physical receivers, like a Gandy Golden, or like a, yeah, like a Gandy yeah. Golden. Um. And then just simply hands, like drop issues, things like that. So for now, I'm going to go with a 9. Uh, yeah. Didn't see any drops or anything like that. And he didn't really shove in those 50 50s. What? That is a real tough scene for the person who got the third, for a one a one mid threat and a three uh, route. Yeah, that, was, that, is, uh, that was Tyree Cleveland. From that, that's a real tough scene. Athleticism didn't. Really get to see a ton of athleticism, so I'm gonna go with okay. eight for now. Uh, I think that's fair. I'd say seven. Uh, short threat is going to be probably an eight. We did get to see some slants, jags, yeah. all that kind of stuff, hitches, so he can run short routes. Mid threat is gonna be a five. Uh, yeah. That's the lowest I'm giving right now outside of extreme circumstances. Like with Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> we got a whole ass one. Uh, deep threat is a nine. nine. I really like his ability to win down the field. Has the ability to win those vertical stems. Uh, probably can develop the posts, all that good stuff. So not really all that worried about that. Route running for now. I'd say seven because next. just because just because we didn't see him run an extensive route tree. Yep, exactly. You got it. Running after catch though, I will give a nine. I really like what we got to see from him in that area, especially for a bigger receiver. Uh, does a really nice shot of extending plays, and we got to see that most of his catches, actually, so yeah. that was really fun to watch. Release move, he developed quite a bit this year. I like yeah. how he can win inside and out, and I really like the active hands. Yeah. So with that in mind, I'm going to go with a 9 there also. Uh, definitely can finish polishing some of that stuff up and getting a little bit more consistent, uh, improving along with competition, all that fun stuff, but he's really good in that area uh, for where he needs to be. Motor and blocking, same thing. Six. Um, Really? Well, I just didn't see a whole lot of blocking, like, solid blocking. Oh, okay. I actually thought he did pretty good in there. He used he utilized the angles really well. He didn't really line up inline a lot. Oh, well, that's not very good. That would be neat. He didn't really line up inline a lot, like you see from some more physical teams, but uh, he was doing pretty decent on the corners, and I don't remember any of those guys ever making more than one or two tackles, so... I'm pretty comfortable with that. And also, the motor and the willingness to be active and engaged beyond uh, his play as well and, and, and catches that he wasn't a part of uh, was yeah. fair enough for me. And then zone awareness, it uh, looked like they were playing quite a bit of man on him for the most part. So kind of hard to say with that. I'm probably going to stick with a 7 uh, and leaving it there for now. Though that can improve. Then there's, there's a lot of tape left this year and everything else like that, of course, as well. One of the easier areas to work out and improve over the course of time when you get pro coaching because it's just mainly tape recognition and how defenses play you. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to assume it is the average. Plus one, minus two, minus one, 
minus two, minus one, minus zero, minus one. So 79 is right on the border of second and third round of the grade. So fun on that. That's fine, yeah, I think that's a fair spot for him. Cool. And they also happens to be the same as Nico Collins. Yeah, I'm still laughing that you gave him a whole ass one for a mid threat. That's just hilarious to me. <laughs> gave him a one. That's, that's yeah, tough. I'm going to have to take you through that really quick uh, when we're done with this. But overall, going back to Gandy Golden, uh, were there any points of contention amongst this other than the blocking that you haven't already mentioned yet? No, uh, the blocking was the main one I disagree a little bit with, but... To be no, fair, I don't know that. if you can tell, but outside of, like, the one guy here, I've been pretty loose with my blocking grades. One six, yeah. one five, two fives, and that's it. Everyone else is first round. Eight or, yeah. It's mainly about, like, the motor aspect and the willingness to block, because, like, blocking technique and stuff, especially for a receiver, can be taught uh, with more work. But, like, if you're willing to block, you're able to block, you don't get completely bowled over by a 5'9 corner, like, that type of stuff, you're at least reasonably decent. So, anything else that you want to comment on that I... No, I think that's good. Sweet. So, with that being said, hopefully you guys learned a thing or two in this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more future content like this over the course of the next couple months and weeks and so on. But for now, hopefully you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Peace out. When this loads. This is like the third time that this has happened. That's a real tough scene. Oh. There we go. Wait.